The first thing we're going to do is, is talk about how to warp time. How can we warp time? So I'm going to give you some examples, and we'll, we'll go through some, some uh, statements. But ever sit in a lecture in college and, or, or in a doctor's office, and you're just bored, and time seems like it's going very slowly, and you look at the clock, and it almost looks like the second hand stopped? And then all of a sudden it, it goes, but it seems like the longest second in the world. That's a manipulation of time. Your brain is reacting to time differently. So the, you can slow time down if you want to by making every day special and taking the boredom away. And for example, when you're learning something new, you're intensely focused and time passes at a different rate, your perception of time. The construct of time is something that the mind has created, we as human beings have created, in order to put mile markers in to our lifespan. It helps us judge where we are in our you know, birth to death cycle. And that's what time is. Time is also very fluid. We all think of 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Tomorrow disproves that. Every leap year day disproves that it because it's not 24 hours a day. It's not 365 days a year. In four million years from right now, there will be no need for a leap year date. It'll be gone. It'll be absorbed because 18 milliseconds uh, is added every single year. I could go into all the science and the elliptical orbit of the Earth. It, what I'm saying is it, your biological clocks, your circadian rhythms are not 24 hours. They're 24 hours and 31 minutes. So time is what, what we popularize it as, what we create it as something we need to adhere to. And we're going to go into some of these. So when you are learning anything new, anything different, a different route to work, a different language, a different subject matter, time changes for you. The way that you perceive time, the way that time passes. You watch a TV show or a movie, Two hours goes by in the blink of an eye. You stand in line at the post office and two minutes seem like forever. So once we start to become acutely aware of time and how we're perceiving it, we can start to learn how to use it and use it constructively. Because you can change the time, your perception of time standing in a post office line very easily and make that time speed up. You can also take time and make it slow down. And part of that is making every day special, meaning what are you gonna do differently today that's gonna change your perception of time? Because days fly by, all of a sudden you go, oh my God, it's Thursday, what happened to the week? Why, because you're in your routine, you're doing your routines, the, your, your, your mind is not aware of time, it doesn't have any reason to change its perception of time. But now if you did a completely different route to work, did something completely different at work, and put, picked up a book you haven't, uh, a subject matter uh, that you've never learned before, or a language or a, a different topic, all of a sudden that day is memorable. That day you accomplish different things. Your perception of the length of that day changes, and your perception of the length of the week changes. A lot of people say, well, as you get older, time seems to go faster. And it does. Your perception of time goes faster. Now, the popular theory on that is well, when you're 10 years old, one year is one tenth of your lifespan. Therefore, it's a very long time. And when you're 50 years old, it's only 2% of your lifespan, so it seems to go much faster. Not really true. What's happening is, when, between the ages of 10 and 25, are when you learn most of the things you're going to learn in life. Most of the things in your life that are new, first-time occurrences, occur between age 15 and age 25, or 10 to 25. 15 to 25 is pretty much in that 10-year period. That's where everything slows down and you can recall those memories so much more accurately. We're going to talk about memory a little bit later and how fallible it is and how it can be manipulated. Um, how many of you have been to Disneyland? Great. How many of you remember as a child seeing Bugs Bunny at Disneyland? Anybody? See, this group won't fall for that. Most people, if you say, how many people remember having fun with Bugs Bunny, they'll raise their hand. Bugs Bunny is a Warner Brothers cartoon <laughs> character, not a Disney, so and it's not a Disneyland. But people will believe that, depending on how you present it, because their, their memory, anyway, we'll, we'll stay on time, but we're gonna come back to memory a little bit later and how, how fallible it is. The holiday paradox, while you're on a vacation, it seems to pass quickly when you're there. It's like, where did the time go? But when you come home from the week's vacation, you go, oh my God, I feel like I've been gone a month. 
Why? Because you were in a whole different time zone. You were focused on time in a different way. There were much more, many more stimuli. There were things to do that were different. You were experiencing different things for the first time or recreating things you loved. And your perception of time is different. So if you think about that, how is it that the week went by so fast and when you come home, you feel like you've been gone for a month? This gives you an insight at the time because my goal here is to show you how to manipulate time, how to control time. And when you learn how to control time, you take a different control over your life and your career and your productivity and the results of what you want to accomplish and the way you interact with others in a whole different way. It changes everything. Einstein's definition of relativity is one of my favorite things. And it's a definition of how time changes. And he said, if a man is talking to a beautiful woman, an hour goes by and seems like it's a minute. But if that man sits on a hot stove iron, two seconds seems like an eternity. That sums up pretty much the perception of time. If you stare at a clock right now and wait until it goes 30 seconds, it will seem like an eternity. But we've now been, I've been now been going for almost 15 minutes and it seems like it just flew by. So again, we're not, we're not consciously aware of how we perceive time. And I'm endeavoring to help you become consciously aware of it because that will change everything. Because once you're consciously aware of it, you will learn to be able to control it. And that's the goal. If you feel there aren't enough hours in the day, you're not using them efficiently and effectively. And that is proof, there's proof of that every single day. You go to work, you do the same things, you deal with the same people, you deal with the same things that come up, and before you know it, the day's over. And you look back and you say, how was that day different? What did I accomplish that I don't accomplish regularly? What made it special? And you can't answer those questions because the answer is nothing. And you need to change that because when you start changing it, it shows you have control of the time, you recognize the value of time, and we're gonna talk about time as a currency, and you are, you're the master of your time instead of giving it away because you can't get it back. And we're going to talk about that in a minute as well. This is just a, a truism, if you will. And you perceive time going by so fast uh, when you're racing to get everything done and you're so busy and it's like, oh, where did the time go? And you don't become efficient. And that's where... Prior to this, we talked about time management, not task management. We're going to go over a little of that as well. If you're going to control time and you're going to manipulate it, you're going to be aware of it and perceive it, you first have to know how much of it you have. It's 930. Okay? So we've got seven and a half hours until five o'clock when this day ends. What are we going to do in these seven and a half hours that are impactful, that are going to change the way you think and go out tonight and right, you know, the rest of the next week and, and on and on with your lives, that changes something forever. That's the impact that we want to have today and tomorrow. So how many, how many shopping days left till Christmas? I mean, uh, what are you going to do? It's sort of a little joke, but you'll find that new people, nobody laughs at my jokes. We once kept track of <laughs> how many I had and didn't get a lot of them. Um, the point is that there are, there are goalposts and they could either be holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, um, um, graduation. They can be all kinds of goalposts that relate to time that you do countdown timers. Countdown timers can be very valuable if you look at them a certain way. And most people don't. They go, oh, my God, I have 14 days left. And then your whole mind kicks into, I got to get through these 14 days. I wish they were done. Instead of saying, oh, my God, when I reach New Year's Eve, I want to accomplish these things. I want to have learned a new language. I want to have tried this new subject matter. I want to have traveled here, done that. People say to me, oh, I wish I'd traveled more, or I really want to take a vacation, or I don't have time to take a vacation. And I say, let me ask you a question. When New Year's Eve comes, will all your work have been done for the year? Yeah. And if you took two weeks off, would all the work still be done? Yeah. Then why not take the two weeks off? It's not an excuse to take six months off. But percep perception versus reality. Two weeks is not going to end the world. And if you are so busy that you're so inefficient that you can't find a way to take two weeks off, then there's a bigger problem here. 
Now, as a digression, again, to manipulate time and control it, have you ever noticed that the week before you go on vacation, you get four times more work done than you ever have in a week? You get a month's worth of work done in a week. Why? Because your brain has a deadline and it's now manipulating time in order for you to reach that deadline to accomplish the tasks you want. And we're gonna talk about that today as well. So once you're aware of how much time you have, then you can take steps to use it more efficiently. And we're gonna put a, a spotlight on that and basically say, one way to ensure you can accomplish it is to hit strict deadlines. Like next, on Friday at five o'clock, I leave for vacation. That is a strict deadline. You've come in Monday morning, you have these five days until five o'clock on Friday to get everything done. There's a deadline. You can take that concept that you already understand and we can draw analogies to it into other, other aspects. For example, Link, uh, you have this project that you're giving yourself four hours to do. Why four hours? Because you think that's how long it's gonna take, except for the fact that your brain sabotages you. Your brain is your biggest enemy and it will try to expand the time to give you other reasons to, to give you other excuses not to finish it or to divert or daydream. And it designs things that way. And if you did it, and, and it'll also, you'll, you'll certainly fill up the time it takes with whatever task that is. But if, as I say, if your dog ate your laptop and it was gone, you had to redo it, you could do it in an hour and a half to two hours. So give yourself two hours. And the next time, give yourself an hour and a half and become more efficient at it and realize that time is a, a precious resource and you never get it back. So let's, you want to make every hour count. Exactly what we've just been talking about. Deadlines change your perception of time. It makes you focus. The tighter you can do that, the more focused you'll become. Now, I'm not saying, you know, you want to write 10 pages in 15 minutes but it doesn't take 15 days to write 10 pages.